what a blessing uh, it is just to, to be here today and to to be alive and well and uh, or well alive <laughs> at least and so we're thankful for the opportunity to to be here and to praise the Lord together in this place we're taking our Bibles and turning uh, to second Corinthians and continuing a theme that has been started and when we think of a theme that mounts up to uh, a key, uh, we're going to continue that theme just a little bit and pray that it will be a real blessing into each one of our lives in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 7. And we read there these words, and um, maybe I'm a little bit loud. I feel loud. I feel loud, Rob, to me. And if I if I can't stand hearing me, <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> no, no, that, that came out wrong. <laughs> okay, if I'm having trouble here, you know, uh, I'm just trying to think of you here. But let's, let's, let's take this key, grasp this key, and understand this key as a, as a wonderful key to eternal life and a key to today life, a key uh, to our eternal salvation, and then a key to our temporal uh, relation and fellowship with God and with others. And, and so what is this key? Well, we read about it in the relationship that Paul had with the Corinthian believers and how that he had poured out his heart in letter uh, to them and and, and he, he made them sorry by the letter. He caused them to grieve. Why? Because he confronted them with their sin. That is not a fun thing to do. Uh, it's not a fun thing to receive. It's not a fun thing to give. It's just not fun any way you turn it and twist it. And, and by letter, especially back in that day, without instant messaging and having some reply uh, back, I'm trying to reply somebody now uh, that I texted this morning, and the, 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 the question went fine, and their reply came back demanding another reply, and not delivered, not delivered, not delivered. And, and, and the, the, the emotion that I might feel wondering if he's wondering what I'm thinking about this statement is a little bit of angst can go back now to the uh, yesteryear of wondering how the Corinthian believers would receive the confrontation by epistle that the Apostle Paul gave. Uh, did they get it? How did they get it? Uh, what was their response? And then, and then Titus is the one who brings this response, and it is a good and godly response. And so Paul says he made them sorry, made them grieve, and he did not repent of that letter. He was not sorry. He made them sorry because uh, he perceived that it made them sorry for a while with a good effect, and that is found in the sorrow that would affect their heart and would confront them uh, with their sin and lead them to a godly response. And so Paul did regret to a degree having to have to send the letter, but not sending it. And so for a brief time awaiting the return of Titus, uh, he feared perhaps this letter was too harsh or received wrong, and, and then how God worked in it, and how God blessed in it, and how God restored and how God used it made him rejoice. Verse 9, now I rejoice, uh, glad that he sent it, not that they were made upset or sorry, but that they were made sorry to repentance. They had a, a pain, a prick, a prod that caused them grief. It caused them godly grief. It caused them good grief. And they were made sorry after a godly manner, a godly grief, the kind of sorrow that God wants uh, to drive them to God, not away from God. And so he, he received damage by us in nothing. There was no wrong suffered, no loss suffered. In fact, uh, much more than loss, it was a rest restoration of the relationship. So the confronting helped. It did not harm, and it produced a, a godly sorrow, a sorrow that made them desire to turn from their sin and back to God and back to the godly people. And then verse 10 says, for godly sorrow, worketh repentance to salvation. And this, this um, result of godly sorrow, this result of repentance is, is salvation. Ultimately and eternally, it's the salvation of our souls. Immediately and, and, and on an ongoing basis, it's the salvation of our relationships and our fellowships and the joy of our relationships with one another. And so this is a real 
key as we look at it and study it. It's a, it's a repentance not to be repented of, not to ever be regretted. The sorrow of the world, in contrast, worketh death. Uh, it results in a spiritual darkness and a spiritual death that is filled with regrets and drives us only away from God and away from others. But this godly sorrow that the Holy Spirit produces in our life is this genuine sorrow to repentance. And so the unbeliever repents and receives eternal salvation. The believer repents and receives the ongoing continual joy and the blessing of the relationships. And so this key to our life, both now and later, of deliverance, of godly repentance, that that, that delivers us from the sorrow of the world. The sorrow of the world is that remorse, but not repentance. That sorry I got caught. That sorry uh, that I've messed things up. That sorry that I've, I've made such a wreck. Uh, the sorry uh, that I, I missed the, uh, I, I missed the sin type of sorrow. The sorrow of the world. Work at death. It only leads to death. It, it has shame. It has despair. It has depression. It has self-pity. It has hopelessness but it doesn't have the work that God wants of godly repentance. The sorrow of the world worketh death, but the, but the godly sorrow. And in verse 11, it delineates this godly sorrow. And so last week we looked at repentance in general as the key, and, and, and not just the sorrow of the world type of repentance, but, but uh, true repentance, a, a, a repentance that brings life, a repentance that brings us to God. And so this is the, the godly sorrow. We describe the fatal flaw of the counterfeit sorrow of the worldly sorrow, and that sorrow uh, has a counterfeit that I'm sorry because, and that's man's uh, way, uh, and man being the key to, to getting out. The fatal end of it is the sorrow of the world worketh death. It worketh death, eternal death, ultimately, uh, in not repenting, and then a temporal death, and, and a death of relationships, a death of the joy, a death of all that God has uh, for us, and, and so so this sorrow of the world. But then the the clearing of the godly sorrow is the sorrow that is that which brings restoration. Restoration to God, restoration to others. Here, restoration of the Corinthian believers to the Apostle Paul. And, and it's, it's the ultimate and the immediate healing of real and beautiful life. That was the message two weeks ago of this key. But let's, um, let's get into the key even a little bit more of, of this word repentance and, and see where the cross and the word of God might lead us um, to. We talked about a judge having a repent-o-meter, okay? Uh, how, how, and this is the title of the sermon, how valuable that might be, how priceless that might be. If if that judge who has heard every story imaginable could could just uh, you know wire somebody up almost like the lie detector test only only way beyond way beyond a perfect one uh, a, a repentometer that would sense the temperature of the heart and 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 so I'd like you to think about this thought of a repentometer that that God God is and His the Holy Spirit is the repent o uh helping us see our wicked heart that we don't know because it's desperately wicked, but God knows it and he tries it. And through his word and through his spirit, he, he helps us to understand our own heart. And, and so he, he, he not only is the repentometer, but he, he gives the repentometer in this scripture, specifically verse 11. And we're going to draw our attention, uh, to that. And so, uh, by way of introduction, it's, it's tough to be confronted with our sin. Nobody likes it. But, but it's even tougher, uh, to do something with that confrontation in a good and godly way. And that is to, to, to repent of it. To repent of it. To face ourself and, and, and think and to turn, uh, from our sin. And so this, this, this repentance is, is upon us today. And so I'd like you to think of, uh, perhaps sin in general. And that's what a person who's an unbeliever, uh, uh faces when they are confronted with the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
They're confronted with the need of, of, of turning from sin in specific, certainly as illustrative to the wicked heart that we have. And, 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 and so repentance is, is not reformation in the sense of, of, of getting rid of all those sins. And, and it's, it's not, uh, some sort of, uh, or just remorse over it, nor is it some sort of penance that we can work for our sin and pay for our own sin. It's this heart turning that sees itself on a collision course away from God and, and, and bound for hell and turns to the Lord Jesus Christ, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. And, 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 and that God wants us to have a repentant heart. Uh, you say, how do I get saved? Well, just, just one thing. Repent and believe the gospel. Well, that's two things. Well, show me a coin, okay? And, and, and what, what is it? It's one coin. What does it have on it? It has two sides on it, okay? And it has a, it has a tails of, of, of a turning from, and that's the repentance side. And then this, this turning to of the heads of, 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 of to the Lord Jesus Christ to, to turn from our sin to the Lord. We can't just turn from our sin to another sin. We can't turn from, uh, one religion to another religion. Uh, we, we've got to see ourselves as sinners and turn to the Lord. So as we think of this subject of repentance, let's think of it in a, in a, in a salvific way of, of, of the saving of our souls. But not not only that, let's think of repentance as an ongoing key to our walk and our fellowship with God and with others in our lives. And so uh, I'd like you to think of, of repentance as a, uh, a need for us on an ongoing basis, on a moment-by-moment -moment basis, because once we're saved, we are not totally sinless. Did you notice that? I noticed that in the mirror this morning. I noticed a few blemishes of the heart uh, quickly and easily. God uh, and wife are <laughs> quick to <laughs> to help out, remind, to point out. I often joke if, you know, I didn't have the Holy Spirit, I have my wife. <laughs> I have Dorinda. And, and, and it, it, it doesn't take long in our day to realize that, that we need to repent every moment. And the battle is ongoing, isn't it? And, and so it takes an ongoing, uh, a, a pressing on in the fight, the good fight of faith. And so while in this body and in this flesh, we are not totally and ultimately redeemed, we have an ongoing need of a repentant heart. Uh, David, and we may look at him next week as an illustrative and maybe some others, Esau and Judas uh, uh, and, and others as illustrations of this worldly sorrow as we continue this series a little bit. If it's the key, let's keep it going here and be blessed by it. Uh, but but there is a, a difference in the sin of David even. For you see uh, a, a man after God's own heart in this repentant heart, this, this God-sensitive heart that, that is not perfect in this flesh, but is not excusing the imperfections, is dealing with in a godly way. That's what the Corinthians were doing. They dealt with sin in a godly way, and the restoration with God and with others was known. And so it's a beautiful key. And, and so I'd like you to think not only of the sin in general that we need to repent of to believe the gospel and receive eternal salvation, but the sin in specific or the sins in specific. And maybe God would press by his Holy Spirit one particular, perhaps one besetting sin and the Bible says in Hebrews, it says that we are uh, compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your mind. And the next verse of 
Hebrews chapter 12, verse 4 says, Ye have not resisted unto blood, striving against sin. Wow, there's a repentant heart. Resisting unto blood, striving against sin. I look at, you know, my um, hands, my arms. There's no nail prints in mine. I, I, I can, you know, take the shirt here and I can go like this and uh, uh, uh. I can see the scar that the neighbor's dog gave me when I was a kid. The dog's name was Tuffy. Okay? And Tuffy got me. I was playing, but Tuffy wasn't, <laughs> okay? And Tuffy got me with razor-sharp teeth. And I, I can see that scar, but I, 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 I can't, though however hard I would look, find the whipping scars of me suffering for the faith or the nail print scars like my Savior's wounds. I can't, I can't find them on me. And I'd like you and I to think of, of the effort that God would desire of a repentant heart, of, of striving against sin. I, I would say today in, in Iraq, we could see some resisting unto blood, striving against sin. They are, they are becoming martyrs for the faith. And while that person goes immediately to heaven, and, and, and we think so tragic, and in the immediate, yes. But there is a shock and a shout of testimony ringing out around the world through that as they resist unto blood, striving against sin, and point dead religion to the only one and the only way where sins can be taken care of, and that is by the blood of the precious Lord Jesus Christ. And so this is through godly repentance, and, and so to come to know the Lord. But then that then let's think of the immediate. Let's think of the of the sin that does so easily beset us. The sin that does so easily beset us. We mentioned sins of addiction uh, that would uh, make us cry out and go back again and again. And I'm thinking of, of the repenting and the repeating and the repenting and the repeating and the again and again and the struggle and the battle with uh, besetting sins. I'm thinking of the sins in relationship. Uh, and we've showed some of these uh, little pictures before of, of how that needs to be restored. And because of self and sin and pride, it's not, it's not, it's not. And and the humbling and the restoring. I'm thinking of sins, and I got that picture of the thief or that picture of abuse or that thought of, of the Jonah that, that is in the sin of omission, the sin of not doing what God has called you to do and running from God and running the other way, uh, not fulfilling the Great Commission. The sin of thought, the sin of word, the sin of deed, the sin of, of religion, the sin of covetousness. I've got a car in front of me I, I saw and, and even, even sat in. That car, that very car, sold brand new a few years ago for 500000 $500,000. And now you could buy it for a mere 225000 as a 2006, almost one-of-a-kind Mercedes-Benz. I thought I'd sit in that, you know? <laughs> I could hardly get in. <laughs> I needed a shoe <laughs> to, get, to get in and to get out. And, and I thought, you know, you know, we might... We might not have the sin of some addiction like someone else in pointing the finger, uh, but, but, but heart and hands and life bound by the sin which so easily beset us. The, the sin of covetousness, the sin of greed, the sin of pride, the sin of thought, the sin of lust, the sin of anger, the sin of, of, of boasting, the sin, the sins of omission, of omitting what God has called us to do and what God wants us 
to do and what God has designed and desired for us to do. And, 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 and bound with sin. Sometimes the besetting sin come upon us in a way such that we just would be prone to, to in discouragement, uh, give up. This, my friends, is the, is the key. It's the cross is the key to the breaking of the sins, to realizing that, that however hard those chains may be, uh, there is a wonderful, a wonderful link that can be broken uh, uh, wonderfully, uh, miraculously, completely in the forgiveness, in the restoration, in the power of the Spirit of God to see something uh, not only eternal happen in the salvation of our souls, but something today happen in the victory in the life of every one of our, of, of our lives, in the life of a believer that lives by the power of the Spirit of God. And that key is in this simple word, this word repent. It has the idea of a deep sorrow over sin. It has, it has the simple idea, and I'm not going to be too compl- uh, complicated about this subject. It's very simple, okay? <laughs> That's what it means. It means to turn. It, it's, it, uh, if I tilted it upside down, and have a U in it, okay? That means you turn, okay? Me turn. That's how simple it is. Uh, I like this t-shirt. You could probably get it online. You know, repent, okay? And, and, and it's for everyone. Uh, it's, it's for people of, of all kinds of religions. And I, and I, and I thought, I thought as I just, you know, it will annoy you with these different pictures that, I, that came up. Dave said he's going to really like this one because he, he's fallen into many of these uh, religions and isms and, and, and ways. And, 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 and one took that coexist sign and just spelt it this way. Repent and believe the gospel. That's the key for everyone. Uh, for those in religion, then this one just jumped out at me, you know, because religion says, hey, you know, I don't need this work today. I don't want this. This is, this is old fashioned stuff. Uh, go get your own corner. Okay. This is outdated stuff. This is not outdated. This is the key. This is the key to our walk with God. It's to repent, to allow the Holy Spirit of God to, to, to show us and to put the spotlight not on the sin of others, but on our own sin. On our own sin. And God has a wonderful way of doing that, doesn't he? How about the sin of unthankfulness? Now that we're mentioning besetting sins. Well, don't annoy me with that one. Why not? I was by the Holy Spirit of God. When I'm complaining about my whatever, uh, schedule, health, sneeze, this, that, or the other thing, and I, and I, and I go to see my friend in Charleston, South Carolina. You know how the Holy Spirit of God used that man and is using that man. His name is Matt Minahan. When, when he, when he helped me move from seminary to, uh, you know, from Pennsylvania to New Jersey, I was struggling from the third story apartment and, and all of a sudden Matt showed up and, and I, I played on his last words and I said, Minahans make light work. And he blessed me and helped me and, and, and oh, how he came to that church in New Jersey also and, and, and was just there, 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 there through transition, through turmoil, through difficulty, through high points, through low points. Uh, he, he, he was just there with his wife with his children uh and and what a blessing what a blessing and, and over the last few months uh, he, he's noticed things where uh he tried to kick a ball and, and and couldn't get his foot to kick the ball he tried to do a basketball layup this tall man who always taught uh, those kids in the day school and in the youth group how to do layups uh he could not make it and noticed something wrong and now in a in a in an nth degree of of a Parkinson's type of disease and a Hashimoto's type of effect, this man can hardly walk and can hardly talk. In four months, he went from taking a huge television, one of these oldie goldie tubey guys, 
that I helped him with, with my son-in-law, James. And it was hard for me to get down the stairs. Four months ago, he took it up the stairs himself and now cannot go up those stairs without his wife behind him, helping him, and she not even knowing what she would do if he started to fall because he has to think about getting this foot around and getting it in front of the other foot. And his speech is slow and slurred, yet mind is clear, but struggling to get out the words. But what words came out when we first met him there on our visit trip with him? What words came out? The words, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God concerning you in Christ Jesus. Those were the words that came out into the ears of this complainer. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit has ways, doesn't he? He has ways of convicting and convincing. He has ways of, of helping us see our sin and see our need. And he has ways of helping someone in weakness be used in volumes to, to be blessed of God. He said, my greatest pain, and, and wow, what a, 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 a man who's, who's, who's had it, it in this world, working on a nuclear sub and a nuclear power plant and, and designing software, uh, uh, his greatest pain is to not be able to go to the nursing home and preach and to not be able uh, to, to do his Sunday school class for the young adults in the church that he goes to. And that's, that's what he's struggling with right now. And I tried to encourage him. I tried to encourage him. He ended up encouraging me. And God calls us and points out, and in a wonderful way, if we let the Holy Spirit and the Word of God today uh, bring us to ongoing repentance. If we've been brought already to eternal repentance and salvation, let the Holy Spirit of God take this word and this verse and bring us to today repentance, to be in fellowship with God and fellowship with others, restored in relationships. And so we go back to that judge and ask, what does this repentometer look like that would be coveted and desired in a good way if I could just see in my own life, and that's where I'd like you to look today, in my own life, if I've got this quality of, of true and godly repentance that is associated with salvation and is associated with the clearing of ourselves in this matter, uh, the thing that would help me from the besetting sin and, 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 and ask you very specifically today, ask you very pointedly today, and ask me as I have one pointed finger with three coming back, am I willing, am I willing, truly willing, and the Lord will test this, Amen. Am I truly willing, truly willing to submit to this repentometer? Okay, now don't get scared. Okay, I'm not going to pull out some pastor gadget thing here and, and get the woo going and the, you know, the volume and the, and the meter going. And I don't know, I don't know if this should be presented as a pass or fail type of thing or a one to ten type of thing. Because I'm sure there's degrees in it, but let the Holy Spirit Figure that out for you and figure that out for me and let the key come into your life in a deeper way that is found in this passage. And so let's just look at it and be willing, if you would, to, to take the, the repentometer test, to, to take this exams. Don't, don't you love exams? Oh, yes. Oh, I love exams. I love a test. Let's, you know, and you didn't even get to study today, okay? I didn't even warn you, uh, to, to, to prepare for this test, but, but it's an ongoing moment by moment and situation by situation and item by item test in our lives that unfolds in this passage of scripture. And so I'd like just to present this with, with seven different words and phrases here that would help you and I see if we're passing the the repent o meter test and, and would would pass that or would get a 10 on the Richter scale of a truly repentant heart in this matter. That's what the 
prisoner wants, doesn't he? To be altogether clear in this matter. That's what the uh, uh, person wants who's at odds and needs to be restored in a relationship to a, to a spouse, to a church, to, a, to, a, to, to the Lord. It's to be altogether clear. And, and not, not altogether clear uh, in the sense of we forgive you just, uh, but way beyond uh, before God, altogether clear in the sense of it is as if it never happened. It is as if you've never committed the crime or the sin. When God forgives us, he wipes it away as far as the east is from the west and puts it in the deepest sea and he remembers it no more. And and so this is a really wonderful way even beyond a pardon type of forgiveness. For the pardon can hang over a person's life. Uh, yeah, Yeah, I was pardoned, but... You remember what I did, don't you? And so do the newspapers. No, this is the wiping away of all the history in in the forgiveness that God gives. And oh, what a joy it is when man delves into that and treats someone as truly repentant and restores in such a way. And God can do that, and God only can do that in relationships. And so these questions are very important to us. And, and so I'd like to just see it in verse 11. And it, and it says there, for behold, this selfsame thing. Now under, understand this, this, this very clearly, that ye sorrowed after a godly sort. That's what we're talking about, godly sorrow, godly repentance that leads to this salvation and this restoration. Ye sorrowed after a godly sort. And here's the questions that come out. And I'm just going to plow through them. I'll read through them, and then I'll plow through them, and then we'll be done, but, but it won't be done. Amen? It'll just be begun in our life, for this repentance meter can kind of go with you, I pray, in a godly way. But it says here, behold this selfsame thing, what carefulness it wrought in you, what clearing of yourselves, what indignation, yea, what fear, yea, what vehement desire, yea, what zeal, yea, what revenge, in all these things, this is the cream of the crop, this is the wonderful news, in all these things, ye are, have approved yourself to be clear, completely clear in this matter. And so, so here it is. Let's ask the repentometer questions. And I'd like you to focus on a sin, a besetting sin. I'd like you to focus as a Christian on a particular area in your life, in your heart, that the Holy Spirit of God would point out and say, how can I apply this to that specific area? Well, let me ask you, how, first of all, careful are you not to repeat the fall? How careful? How careful? What carefulness it wrought in you. And then there's, there's this word in the King James Version that comes up again and again. In fact, some six times in this text, uh, it's the word yay. I like that word yay. <laughs> okay. And it means a, a cumulative type of thing. It, it has the idea, uh, this, this, this idea of, of yay. It has the idea of an adding type of thing, of a, a, a mounting type of thing in our lives where, where this is, is mounting up again and again. And so that we might say truly a yay in our life. So it, it has a joining thing. Yea, what this? Yea, what that? Yea, what care? Yea, what zeal? Yea, what vehement? Yea, what desire? Yea, what clearing? It, it, it just adds and adds and adds and it mounts up in our life. And I pray that we would let it add up these tests, these, this list. That first of all, how careful are you? How careful? How careful are you not to fall again and repeat it? What steps have you taken to avoid? What carefulness it wrought in you. Um, let's look at number two, and we're going to skip one of the clearing, and I'll end with that one. But number two, um, how condemning are you of the sin in your personal life? Okay? How condemning are you of the sin in your personal life? Now, I'm not, I'm not speaking about condemning sin in somebody else's life. Oh, that's, that's easy. Okay? But here is what indignation, what godly sorrow, what, what godly anger, what, what godly righteousness, a godly righteous anger you have. Condemning the sin in, in your own life. Easy to point out the sin in others' lives. But 
hard to point out the sin in our own life, but here it's, yea, what indignation. Are we, are we mad at sin? Are we mad at what sin cost us? Are we mad at the toll it took? Are we mad at the testimony it took? Are we mad at the damage that it did in our own life, in, the, in our relationships, in the lives of others? Can we truly, and in a godly way, have godly indignation. You say, Pastor, we shouldn't get mad. Here you should. We should get mad at sin and get mad at the sin in our own life, not the sin of others' lives. It's easy to do that, isn't it? And to excuse the sin in our own lives. Heard it yesterday. Well, there's a spe- special speaker and he's, he's really prominently known for speaking out and against the gay movement, okay? I thought, well, that's something to really be known for. But the sad truth, even among Christianity, as we call to repentance, is this picking on a particular sin and avoiding the sins that are, that are within and putting one sin above another sin and excusing the other sins while we pick on the one sin. Wow. We need to pick on all sin. Amen? Especially the sin in our own life. Especially that sin. And so what indignation? Thirdly, uh, what, what caution? What caution? And this fear is a godly fear. It's a fear of falling again. It's a fear that would lead you to step right. It's a, it's a fear that would say, I don't want to fall into this sin again, ever again. And so this, this caution is there, a reverence toward a holy God who has been offended and a healthy effect in our lives of helping us to stay, uh, correct in our steps. Yea, yea, what what caution, what, what fear. Fourthly, I'd like you to consider in this repentometer, and then we're going to try to draw an illustration that would, that would help you. It's a, it's an illustration that would relate to, uh, what vehement desire, the next phrase. And, and I want to think about this being a commitment, a commitment. So how careful are we? And some of these would overlap, of course. How condemning are we of the sin in our own lives? How cautious are we to not ever go, to not ever repeat, to not ever return? How committed are we to doing right? Yea, what vehement desire. This has to do with a yearning and a longing, a desire in the heart to do what's right and to do what's what's righteous. A vehement desire. It has to do with our passion. It has to do with our heart. And when we speak of the word repentant, it is an emotional word. It's a word that's packed and blessed with emotion. Fifthly, yea, what zeal. This has to do with a burning consumption. How consumed are we with doing what is right? How consumed are we with doing what God loves? This is a burning zeal in our lives. And then, then this, this other phrase, yea, what revenge has to do with a, with a battle that is, is ongoing that I would actually get back at what Satan took. Wow. That's a good revenge. Oh, the years of sinning wasted. Could I but recall them now? I would give them to my Savior. Make him Lord of all. A repentant heart is a, is a combative heart. It, 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 it shows and sees that there's an ongoing battle, the battle of the ages. And there is a battle that is ongoing. And it's a, it's a wonderful road to victory that we're talking about. And a repentant heart is a wonderful, it, uh, the wonderful key to the victory in this battle as we take the shield of faith, faith. But let's remember that, 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 Constant victory means and equates to a constant battling in our lives. Don't get tired of this battle. Don't think it's once and done. Don't think it's over because you're going to wake up tomorrow morning and realize it's not over. It's a battlefield, brother, not a recreation room. It's a fight, not a game. Run if you want to, run if you will, but, but we got to be here to stay and to, and to hold the line and to not only hold the line, but to advance the force. 
the forces to advance in our life into areas of victory and to have victory over the besetting sins. That sin, perhaps, the Holy Spirit of God is wonderfully, wonderfully pointing out in our heart and our life. And to have a, a real desire to have a victory in that, the battle against sin is the battle of the ages. And so, yea, what revenge, a revenge against what Satan has taken. And this is a revenge that then would lead this, this, this attitude, this mindset. And I'd like to just, just review these words for us today. The words of carefulness. Um, <clears throat> the words of, of, of a condemning, a right condemnation, condemning sin in our personal life. The, the, the words of, of, of not only condemning, but the words of caution where it would lead one to take proper and good and godly steps and to have a commitment with a burning zeal being consumed by a zeal to do what's right and to get back and fight the good fight of faith and get up and the just man rises again and again and again as he gets gets up in this battle and goes forward. And, and so then it would lead to this end result that's mentioned at the beginning of the list and mentioned at the end that you're all together clear in this matter. It's as if it didn't happen. It's totally clear. It's, it's like what charges have been laid against you? Uh, uh, what sentence, what penalty, what offense uh, might be legally said because it's been truly forgiven by that virtue of a repentant heart, the key to our eternal salvation, the key to our today, temporal, right now salvation, the salvation of our relationships, the salvation of our fellowship with God Almighty. This is the key. It's a repentant heart. And, and God gives us the repentometer that we would be clear, altogether clear in this matter. I was thinking of this illustration and hopefully be helpful to us in closing of the person who was walking down life's road and didn't notice the manhole that was uncovered and just whoop, went down uh, into the muck, into the mire, into the disgust of, 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 of that fall into that manhole. And, and, and it took him a long time to get up and to get out and to be rescued from that manhole. And then and then, um, then walking down that street again, he remembered, wow, uh, yesterday it was that, that I went into that manhole. In fact, it was that manhole, and, 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 and he was upon it again, and, and now, now looked at it and looked at what, what, where he was before and, 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 and kind of uh, imagined the day before and, 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 and the fall and what was down there, and looking so closely, he slipped down into it again. He slipped down into it again. And, 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 and so he, it took him a long time to, 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 to get up. And, and, and then the, the next day, he, he, he went down that road again. And, 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 and he went down that road and, and remembered the day before and the day before that and this terrible fall and was contemplating that. And, and, and once again, gets, gets too close and the same thing happens. And, 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 and then the next day comes and he takes a different road. He takes a different road. This is the word of repentance. This is the word of turning. This is the, where, the way of forgiveness. This is the, the path, the plan of repentance. That, that I'm going to take a different road and have a careful life concerning this item or concerning this subject of sin uh, or this specific besetting sin. That I'm going to condemn it in my life with all passion and anger, that I'm going to be cautious about it, not to ever step there again, to take a different road, that I'm going to have a, a commitment and a zeal in my life that will consume me and, and get back and fight back and fight the good fight of faith, that I might live a life that pleases God. It's the key of a true repentant heart. And God gives us a repentometer. When we find, with our heads bowed and our eyes closed, that sin still besetting, I wonder if this would be the question. I wonder if this would be the answer to victory. We could find the repentometer recipe 
and meter, judging and helping us in a godly way.